Well, at the beginning of this video, I got to interrupt with something completely different, but uh, the rest of the video will continue after. Um, a couple of weeks ago, a company, a boots company reached out to me, and I get emails from a bunch of like stuff, but I just kind to put it off. But you know, boots are boots, and I might as well try something different. And they sent me a pair of boots. So the company is High C, uh, but they sent it to me, asked me what I think about them, and just that. Uh, they, it, these boots are kind of different than other ones because at least these ones, which I've never heard of any other boots company, they have a 100 year lifetime warranty, um, which is, I've never actually had boots that have that. Uh, normally if you blow a hole or rip them out, you gotta get a, just a new set. Um, boots normally now are like 80 to 100 plus dollars for something very similar to this. Um, and these ones, without any discounts or nothing, were $63 and with a 15% discount, which uh, would be in the description of this video because there is a discount code uh, and the link will be in the video. It would be like $52, I think, or 50, 50 something is a 15% discount. Um, so they're very similar to other boots I've had. I would say I should have got the taller ones. They're a little short for me, but that was my fault. Um, they are definitely lighter than the normal boots that I wear, and my feet don't get as hot in these, which is kind of nice. Uh, with them being lighter, they are thinner, and I guess you kind of feel more on the bottom, but they have actually good tread. It's not like you're gonna slip and fall in the mud. Um, I do have my normal other shoe on right now, which is destroyed. But they're lighter and they're a lot, I'm gonna say my feet wouldn't sweat as much in these at all compared to my other boots, because I do get sweaty feet. So these are brand new. I mean, you just saw me take them out of the box right there. Um, so I would have to wear them for a little while to actually break them in, because they have that brand new boots feel, which every boot has. and. You gotta break them in to adjust to your feet. But I do like that they're lighter and uh, it'll be nicer in the summer because it's not as hot and uh, you can actually wear them then and not have your feet soaked from sweating. But you can feel more on the bottom. So you got give and take. You got lighter boots so you're not sweating, but you have that. I'm being completely honest here. I'm not sugarcoating nothing. Uh, I don't do that stuff. But. Unlike any other boot, like I said, 100 year lifetime warranty. If something happens, you just have to go to their website. It says on this little card that comes with it, two minute, one minute setup, sign up and enjoy. I actually haven't looked at that because I just opened this and saw this card, but that's what I saw. It also sends this waterproof iPhone thing. I guess if you go kayaking or swimming or something, I don't have time to kayak, so. Um, but it's a waterproof case. Um, I don't really know what else to say because I haven't really got around to wearing them a lot. I should have made this video a while ago, but I've been busy and other stuff came up. But check them out, it's High C. The link will be in the description. And once I wear them more, I guess I can mention it and see how to actually like what I think of them with more wearing. But check out the link in the description. There is a 15% discount code. And that'll all be in there. With anything on the website from what I remember. And that's how it is. So we'll get back into the rest of the video. It'll be a feeding video. Which I have actually never had time to do for a video. And I'm giving you a sneak peek on what's to come. And thanks for watching. Well, today we're showing something really normally different because normally when I'm feeding, I don't really make a video, but today I finally decided to get around to it. It's about a second, we're almost putting snap legend right now. 
I'm up. Right now it is about 3.30 in the morning. Actually, a little later. Woke up at 3.30. It is 3.50. We just had to get all the equipment up here. Um, put a snaplage in. Still gotta do corn and grass. Yeah, Hart is actually scraping this morning. He woke up at the same time. But I'll show him in a little bit when I get there. So with the first herd in the morning, in the afternoon or at night, when the mixer right gets parked, we put the grains in. So all the minerals stuff like that gets put in because that stuff wouldn't get hot. There's always a chance that uh, the corn, grass, or snapper should get hot. We do that in the morning. I don't know why I didn't just dump that right away. Look at this hole more than that. I normally don't show the feeding because honestly at 3.30 or 4 in the morning I'm really not in the mood to talk to a gambler. But there's no one saying I have to talk a lot. I can just record. I'm hoping this picks me up because the camera's behind me and I'm talking about well, forwards. less driving to do in the morning with the loader. At least we try to make sure there's enough grass up here every day for the feeding. So I'm putting the last of that in. I'm thinking the camera's picking up, sitting here full of water. We could fill it full of water here. And uh, a pump. So, we're gonna get that filled up real quick. It's not the perfect setup. But uh, we wanted to see if it'd work first before we made something a lot better. But so far we like it. We'll get that filled. 
I didn't really record putting the water in because the lights stopped working on the back of the feed tractor. It's just the spare one still. But uh, now that the water's in, I just letting the timer finish going down. So that way it has the mixing time. Uh, I got up for this herd actually pull the loader up anyways. Because for the first group, we let like a thousand pounds out for our hospital pen or the cows that get uh, extra care, special needs pens. Some people call it different. And um, we'll let that feed put in as soon as the timer's done. And we can bring that to there. That gets fed out by hand because, well, you can't drive uh, with the mixer wagon where that feed bunk is but it's not a lot of work it's only like a thousand pounds normally once it's done counting down normally you got stuff to do until like the last 30 seconds it's zero after it's at zero you just hit enter it does this little thing and then for this herd it says the pen that's going to get delivered first pen is actually not first it's actually a little bit we're gonna let out which is whatever they have it labeled in as a computer and then it counts down from it counts down from zero to whatever I gotta let out I don't think the camera's gonna pick up the numbers but it's a little more than a thousand pounds we're letting out 1100 Put this down for this well i just missed it because i had a backup and stuff to get it all but we got the thousand hundred pounds in there exactly it starts beeping at you when you're getting close so it makes sure to let you know it's quite easy i'll go dump this real quick and then we can go see what the shoveling's like We're just driving over to the special needs pen or the hospital pen. Everyone calls it a little different. Gerhardt's already got first and second moved over and he's cleaning. We'll be coming through with the uh, shoveling wagon to shovel out whatever little bit of shoveling there is. get this dumped in here I gotta put this down again because I can't really run everything with the camera just dump that in there it's a tight fit so I'd rather put the camera down and not take a wall out we are going so Gerhardt when he starts the same time He'll have all the animals moved and a good portion of it already scraped by the time I get there with the uh, having to come through with anything. He's right there in the middle. You, I don't know if the camera picked up. He was turning to do that center alley, which when we were doing the mats video, I showed Stan was cleaning that section, so you guys should know where he was. And drive back up to the little, uh, mixer wagon. Park this there, and the shoveling wagon's actually right here. That's where it gets parked, and we'll head over there with that. So Gerhardt was pushing manure in. He's got first and second herd moved over to one side. That's just until he's done the scraping, and then they come back over. But as soon as I come with the shoveling wagon, he stops and moves. He has no clue I'm recording this morning. He's closed the gate so no cows get out while we're doing this. We'll go down and shovel whatever shoveling. And... Oh. Get this done.
Yes, this is old fashioned way of doing it. We are using hand shovels. Ain't no skits there gonna do that. But the nice thing with these bunks, there's a pro and a con. We never have to push up feed, ever. But when it comes to shoveling, we have to do it by hand. So there's a pro and a con, but this is how the barn was made back in the day. I think the camera's picking it up. It's not very good with light. That's all there was for this herd. Honestly, probably 300 pounds too much in here, but not bad at all. And uh, second group, I gotta go up. Yesterday they were perfect. He just parks out of the way a little bit. But today, there was nothing in here. He's gonna keep scraping until I come through the feeding. To shovel that out, it probably took us like three, four minutes to get hard of me. Not bad at all. As long as there's two people, it goes quick. But it's too dark for the camera, so we're gonna shut it off. Gerhard just saw me pull in. He went back to the middle. The scale actually says 10-1, so you actually know what delivery to do, even though you really don't need to know from the gap, but it just says that. We'll drive up the first herd. That hospital pen I let out, that said 10-5, because that's, we had the four main herds. does not like poor lighting. One bit.
see it, but we're out. Right on the money. All bunks full. We'll get out of Gerhardt's way. And we'll open these gates back up and finish fishing manure in. We're gonna go feed a second herd. So that was pen one that we just did. We're gonna go to pen two, feeding two, or feeding one, because we're doing the morning. Click it, you can resize it. That tells us what we were feeding. And we can either go up or down in it. Um, it was low. Oh shoot, don't wanna do that. So we're gonna retype it in. We'll feed a extra 100 pounds this time and then in the afternoon, or extra 200 pounds, I mean. So we'll do eight, nine. That's an extra 200 pounds for this feeding and then we'll see for the afternoon if we'll do more or less. The enter and then we can do the canola. And it counts down to zero for each mineral or grain and lets it go through. So this does all the work for you. in Snaplage for second herd. And then we put the grassy corn in, spray some water in there and water mix up and we drop second herd. And basically what you just saw with first and second, we'll do the same thing with third and fourth off. But with third and fourth we'll check the shovel before we uh, make the first load. The reason we uh, make this first load before the shoveling is just because we can't really, with the scale now, we can't really adjust the load anyway once it's started. Plus, if it worked the day before, it's normally good the next morning. And any little bit of adjustment you can do with the second feeding. And with making the minerals and the grains in the morning or the night before, it probably gives you an extra half hour just because you don't have to be as rushed. Half the loads are already made. By the time we get the third herd, it'll be light out. It'll be a lot easier to see on the camera.
counts down to zero, we're at like 150 pounds left. Once it gets to 100 pounds, it starts blinking red. I don't know if you saw that in the skid steer. And then once you hit zero or negative numbers, it holds steady. Moving that up. Stop putting the damn feet in. Now the old way, because we just changed the scale system a couple months ago. It's more of a feet tracking style now. The old way, it was just rolled down and you put in the mount and the scale just counts upwards in weight and once you reach the right numbers you stop which worked perfectly fine um, but you had no tracking ability with that like you didn't know what everyone was feeding so if it was a different person feeding you didn't know exactly what they fed that day if they forgot to write it down just a lot easier there's no more questioning on what the herds are getting and the scale does all the calculations for you so it's always right numbers no one has to do the calculating anymore so we'll slap some water in i just have this here because i just parked here for some reason but i didn't need to this time so that's basically just putting the water in just go side to side Make sure it gets everywhere. But I gotta put the camera down because I can't hold on to this, watch the scale, and then turn it off in time. But you get the gist. And no, we're not shooting over the other end. I just went through after getting to the middle of feeding second, open the gates up. They're slowly coming over. These will slowly come over too. And then Gerhardt's already over on three and four. He's moving those over and scraping. So I'll get over there, open up the last gate. You can see the cows are slowly walking over. By the time he's done scraping third and fourth and I'm feeding them, a lot of the cows will have slowly walked over and it'll make moving that side over easier. And he'll scrape the last bit and it'll be done. I'm in the first herd right now. I'm doing the second load for the afternoon shift. The windows are kind of dirty, but I just got done closing the gates behind me that divide first and second but the afternoon feeding the cows are still over here but you can see that once they hear the tractor coming they just mosey on out of the way they can also just walk by so it's not like it's a big deal it's a lot more light now a lot easier to record this And there is a cow. You just slow down a little. You just gotta turn the PTO off. They know you're here and they'll move. You never have to touch them. You don't even have to get out. They just slowly move. They know the drill. They also know that means feed's coming. There. I got about a thousand pounds left, a thousand two hundred. A little more than I should, but I'm also recording trying to show this stuff. And you can see they come right behind and they start eating. <laughs> 